Okay, so welcome to this new video from Bicotic. The Boardman SLR 8.9 Carbon versus the Carrera Virago Carbon. It's a bargain bike smackdown. So just before I get into this video, I had a bit of a crash at the weekend. Went into a left-hand corner, lost the front wheel and came down like a sack of beep. And, uh, well, road rash is a pain in the backside, literally. Got a pretty sore thumb from it as well. So the moral of that story is be careful out there, people. In the UK right now, it's very slippery. Anyway, enough of my sad tale. I'm making this video because I got a comment from well, this guy. Hey, I would appreciate if you could compare two low-end carbon bikes in terms of value. The Boardman SLR 8.9 Carbon versus the Carrera Virago. And I've had a few people ask me about looking at some cheaper end bikes. So I thought, yeah, why not? Let's give it a whirl. Okay, so the Specialized S-Works Tarmac SL6 Dura-Ace Di2, £9,499. This is literally the furthest out of your target price range as you could possibly go. So forget about this bike, but let's keep it in the stack so that we can compare the cheap bikes against it and see what the differences are. So here's our first contender, the Boardman SLR 8.9 Carbon. It's got a Tiagra group set. And it's coming in at a thousand pounds. The frame's made of C7 carbon, whatever that is. I guess it's carbon. For this version here, which is the medium, it's coming in at 9.05 kilograms, which, yeah, I guess for this money is about what you'd expect, really. Now, when I first saw this bike, I immediately thought, yeah, it's sort of a pipe and slippers type, sportif, softy. However, when we compare it back to back with the tarmac, I was quite surprised to see that actually the geometries aren't a billion miles out really if we look at the numbers there's actually not much in it really less than a centimeter in the reach and literally two mil in the stack so the geometries are quite similar but obviously on the boardman the steer has not been cut and we've got a big pile of spacers lifting those handlebars right up there which is i think where i got the pipe and slippers idea from the other thing of note is obviously on the tarmac they've cut out this little bit here on the, uh, the seat tube and not on the boardman which then pushes that further forwards and you can see there what a difference that makes around the bottom bracket you can see that the gearing on the tarmac is a 52 and the boardman is a more friendly 50 outer ring. I'm riding the Tiagra group set on my winter bike and I've got no complaints really. It just works and yeah, no complaints. So I'd recommend that. The only slight thing I'd say about the Boardman gearing is it comes with a 1228 in a 10 speed. I'd rather that was the 1130, 1132 on a bike like this. Just to give you that slightly easier gearing. Obviously the other thing to note is this is a rim brake bike. Looks wise, I think it looks pretty cool really. I'm not massively keen on the skinny little seat posts that set forward a little bit and I've never been keen on this saddle. The cabling's nice and neat into the frame here, I quite like that, that looks cool. And on the Boardman site we've got a couple of other pictures of it. I think it's quite a good looking bike. I mean we are talking about a budget bike here. It's pretty aero according to the website. It's pretty flat along the sides here isn't it? Almost like they've cut it out of a slab of aluminium, other than that stupid because it's carbon. Anyway, let's move on to our next contender. We've got the Carrera Virago. Comes with a Sora group set from Shimano. Basically, that's their fifth in line. So it goes Dura Ace, Ultegra, 105, Tiagra, which is what we've got on the boardman, and then Sora. It's a nine speed group set and actually comes with the 1132, which is what I wanted on the boardman. So that's a tick there for me. We've got a full carbon frame on a complete bike coming in at 720 quid. Now there's no geometry on the Halfords website which is where you would buy this in the UK so I couldn't tell you what size this frame is but weight wise they've got it listed at 9.9 .9 kilograms. Immediate first impressions when I saw this bike for the first time I immediately thought it's a supermarket bike which I guess technically it is because you buy it from Halfords but you kind of know what I mean. However if you're a cute little Martian that has decided it wants to get into road riding Riding. How do you decide between the nice cheap Carrera and the slightly more expensive Boardman? Well, the first thing we've got to talk about is this photograph. I think it probably was taken by the same guy that took this photograph. And the eagle-eyed amongst you will notice that the forks are the wrong way around. 
So the guy that took this photograph had absolutely no idea what he was looking at. So if you're going to try and sell a full carbon race bike, there's some definite no-nos here. Number one, toe clips and straps. Looks okay on a retro steel bike, but let's not photograph it on a new carbon bike. Crank pointing at nondescript angle. Eh, nope. Either put it in line with the chainstay or put it in line with the seat tube. And my absolute favourite no-no is photographing a bike with it in the granny ring. And then also worth a mention, obviously, is the reflectors all over the bike, giving it that ultra sporty look. Eh, no, take them off. Uh, the bell, yep, not very sporty, you know, very practical, but nope, let's not put it in the photograph. And then why have we got the shifters pointing up almost at 90 degrees? just looks bizarre so yeah they could have really done a lot better with this my humble opinion it looks like garbage however i say that quite a lot don't i however however bike radar to the rescue for this bike as they have done a review on it took a much better photograph all the reflectors are off they've taken those pedals off handlebars and shifters look at a better angle and actually the bike looks pretty cool and in fact, in the review, they say that it rides pretty well for the price as well. They've also done a review of the Boardman, and I've put both those links in the description below. Something to note is this comes with a square taper bottom bracket and crank set, which is pretty old fashioned tech. And the last time I had one of those, it came with a quill stem. Probably not quite as cool as this one. But hey ho, you, you get what you pay for. So just fading between the two. Unfortunately, I struggle to take the Carrera seriously in this photograph. So immediately fading between the two, the Boardman wins it for me. On looks, it just looks like a much neater, more professional package. On to the verdict. And in this particular Smackdown, we have the Boardman on the left, we have the Carrera on the right. Looks wise, the Boardman takes it with a 5 out of 10. The group set, the Boardman takes it because the Tiagra is a higher group set than the Sora. Weight wise, again, the Boardman takes it because it's lighter. Obviously, price wise, the Carrera takes it because it's cheaper. Wheels wise, I think on both these bikes, they're going to be much of a much and will be the weakest part of the bike. They're going to be heavy and cheap, so I can't split them on the wheels. And then the gearing, I have to give it to the Carrera because I prefer the 1132 to the 1228. So looking at that, all in all, the Boardman takes it. So no real surprise there. Okay, so let's say that you bought the Boardman. You paid your £1,000. I think you've got yourself a pretty good bike. I don't think anybody's really going to think any less of you if you turn up to a pretty fast club ride. It looks the business. So what about when you've owned it for a couple of months and you want to start upgrading it, making it into a more of a speed weapon? What could you do? How about we take out some of those spacers, bring the handlebars down a bit, get a nice set of Prime RR50 V2 carbon clincher wheels from Wiggle, which cost 439 quids, weigh a pretty respectable 1600 grams. Now those wheels are obviously more aero and I would say they're going to be a lot lighter than the stock wheels that come with this boardman. And they look pretty cool too. And if you're feeling extravagant, let's replace that saddle and stick on a Pro Logo scratch, which I think looks pretty nice. A little bit pricey at 169 quid, but the NAC version is only 155 grams, so nice and light. So yeah, I think you could make that look pretty cool. I'd certainly like to take that for a spin. Other wheels you might consider, we've got the Hunt 4 Season Aero, pretty light, just over the 1500 gram mark, and a pretty good price for 299 These get a good review, so you could chuck a pair of those on, because like I say, the stock wheels are going to be the weakest point of this bike. Then personally, I would definitely change the tyres for a pretty moderate price. You could get some Grand Prix 5000s, which is what I use on my bikes, and I absolutely love these tyres. Having said that, I guess the only blemish is that one of them let go on me at the weekend and that's why I fell off. But I don't think I can blame the tyres. And then why not stick in a set of supersonic tubes? These little puppies come in at 50 grams each. And in fact, even if you go tubeless, this setup is still lighter than going tubeless. So stick all those on and I think you will feel a real difference between that and the stock bike.
The only caveat to that is these supersonic tubes are obviously very thin, so you have to be quite careful to put them in. I guess there's more chance of them blowing out. I've not had one go, but just be aware of that. Of course, you could try latex tubes. Lots of people swear by them. Whenever I've tried them, they've just caused me a load of hassle. So much like going tubeless and getting covered in sealant, I just don't bother really. I'd be interested to know what you guys think. Tubeless or sticking with tubes? Which do you prefer? Comment down below. Okay, so what other choices have you got when you're on this kind of budget? I thought I'd have a quick look around and see what else there is. And if you head over to Planet X, they've got the Pro Carbon Evo Disc, which comes with the SRAM Rival 22 group set. And when we compare it to the Boardman, yeah, it's probably a little bit more racy, I would think. And for 899, coming with hydraulic disc brakes, that's good value that. Surely. Shame there weren't any bigger pictures for me to have a look at. But I think that looks like quite a nice bike. I did actually look up these wheels and Planet X are selling them for 200 quid. And they weigh nearly 2 kilograms. So, as ever, your cheap wheels are going to be pretty heavy. Or, head over to Ribble and you can get the R872. This also comes with the Tiagra group set. 1132, so that's good. And a smidge under a £1,000. It also comes in at 9 kilograms. So very slightly lighter than the Boardman. I quite like the look of that. I think I'd put that on my list if I was looking at this budget. So to be fair, they're the only two carbon bikes that I could find that slipped into this budget. I'm sure you'll tell me about some other ones out there. Let's not forget about the metal bikes, the aluminium bikes. This is the aluminium version from Boardman, the SLR 8.9A, and this actually comes with the group set one up from the carbon version, the 105. Same price and actually a little bit lighter. So yeah, why not? I'm down to personal preference there, I think. Or, here we go, the Cube Attain Race. And I know a little bit about this bike because I bought it and it's my winter bike. Cubes, they can be a little bit quirky looking, but I absolutely love it. It's very comfortable, it's fast, it's so far, even chucking it down the road, it just picks itself up and gets going again. Slightly makes me laugh because for some reason it reminds me of Red from the movie Robots. Something to do with this front end, I think. Now the slight caveat to me buying this bike was I had a pair of Head Ardennes aluminium wheels lying around for off my summer bike that I replaced and they slotted straight on to the Cube and make quite a big difference. These wheels on the Cube are very heavy. In fact, I've got them sitting in the corner of my room ready to go on eBay. Never ridden but they are proper paperweights. The other great thing about this bike is you can get these specific mug guards that are designed especially for the Attain. And like I say, I've got it for my winter bike and these mug guards fit nice and snug. You can see there, this is a shot of my bike after I rode it on the rally ride two weekends ago and you can see it's got nice and mucky. It's pretty mucky up here in Yorkshire at the moment. And just to give you an idea that these bikes can do the business, this was a, it was actually reduced to 40 miles I think because it was icy that day coming out of Harrogate and we averaged 21.9 miles an hour for the whole route and on my winter bike I was pretty pleased with that. So yep, like in this bike, the only thing I really wish I'd done was spent another 200 quid and got the hydraulic brakes. Because though they work, the cable brakes from TRP are very wooden if you've ridden hydraulic brakes before, which I have on my summer bike. But hey ho, there we go. The only other problem with the hydraulic version is you have to put up with the Mr. Blobby shifters. Okay, one other bike that I would personally look at because I've had one before is the Scott Speedster. I enjoyed owning one of these. I can't remember which model it was or which year it was. It was a long time ago now, but it did everything it said on the tin and I enjoyed owning that. This is the Scott Speedster 10, 105, a little bit heavy, I guess. You definitely want to change these tyres because according to BicycleRollingResistance.com, they come in at 18 watts per tyre. So you're almost giving away 20 watts to someone with a decent pair of tyres straight out of the shop. And that's a lot, even though I do like the look of them. And if you're watching this thinking, what is he talking about? A thousand pounds is a hell of a lot of money to pay for a bike and you don't want to spend more than 400 quid. You could always pick up a Triban RC120 from Decathlon. Again, Bike Radar have done a review on this and they think it's pretty good. So I'll put the link for that down below. There's also a rim brake version which is a fair bit lighter, so probably the way to go. So there's options, even on that budget. And of course, if you know what you're doing, there's always eBay. After two or three minutes of looking on eBay, this little beauty popped up. 
under a thousand pounds buy it now and it's the Ultegra carbon Cannondale Synapse which got amazing reviews this this model uh, and looks really nice so if you know what you're doing check out eBay as well and that's about it for this video as ever always interested to hear what you've got to say about these things and if you like the video give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel